Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is day 215, October the 8th, 2017, Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Sunday evening edition. Hopefully this upload will occur before midnight. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to do these earlier. So um, let's pick up with where we left off on the Las Vegas shooting and the um, alleged gunman, Stephen Paddock. In the case of the Las Vegas shooting and the alleged shooter, Stephen Paddock, we should learn the truth. The results of the investigation, if done thoroughly and honestly, should reveal 90% of the truth, at least. In concluding the FBI investigation, the total evidence should be released into the public domain. There should be a thorough investigation, an honest investigation, and everything that they learn should be released to the public. We have two major crime scenes, obviously, and the one crime scene where the spectators were at the concert is a very large crime scene. We have many victims, so it's going to take some time. We're going to have to be patient and allow this investigation to play itself out, but it needs to be an honest and thorough investigation. And I'm going to go through here in just a second what I would consider that to be and what we should expect from it. But it is clear at this point that we're one week out from this tragic event, the worst shooting, mass shooting in American history, that the initial narrative that we've been given, lone wolf gunman, just snapped. That narrative is dead in the water. It ain't going to fly. You know, I even saw an interview, you're now seeing members of Congress even saying the same thing. I saw a clip of Trey Gowdy, where Trey Gowdy's looking at this. He's a uh, was a former prosecutor, he's looked at this and said the same thing that most of us are saying. No way, number one, that Mr. Paddock acted completely alone and independently without any help or support from anyone else. This is just, this is just not possible. And as we see more and more people getting their videos uploaded, every single day there's new video footage being uploaded that people took from their cell phone. We're now getting more and more looks at this situation and it's becoming more and more likely that there had to be not only just someone uh, working with and helping Mr. Paddock, supporting him, it's starting to appear very likely to me that there was at least one other shooter. This investigation should include the following. A complete autopsy, including a focus on the brain of the alleged shooter, Mr. Paddock. We are getting these little leaks and blips, propaganda funneled through the corporate media, now suggesting that he wasn't of sound mind, that he may have had some mental issues. Well, this is why we need a 100% complete autopsy on the, the alleged shooter. Every single thing that you can possibly look at should be looked at, even things that generally aren't looked at in a normal autopsy. This is not a normal autopsy. We need a complete, hardcore, focus examination of Mr. Paddock's brain. We need to know whether or not there were any type of uh, injuries to his brain or anything that might suggest that he was having some mental failings. We need to dispel this rumor one way or another and prove it either true or false. You cannot leave that hanging out there. The allegations are now being made that there was some issue with his mental capacity. We need to have a look at that brain very, very closely. The toxicology, not just the standard toxicology. We need to draw spinal fluid because there's a lot of things that can be, that will not be detected in the standard toxicology Then you can only detect through a spinal tap. Get some of that spinal fluid. Just about everything shows up in a spinal fluid tap. So that's what we need. Again, this is not a, a normal autopsy. And uh, it is possible, it is probable that Mr. Paddock could have been given something and we need to understand exactly everything about the physical and mental situation regarding Mr. Paddock because these claims are out there, they're being made. Therefore, since the claims are being made, they need to be investigated. So we need a complete toxicology including spinal fluid and obviously we definitely want to get the results of the blood alcohol level. And of course, that would be standard in any type of autopsy. We should find out 
the results of the blood alcohol level and the contents of his stomach. These are very, very important things that need to be looked at in this autopsy. It needs to be very, very thorough, a complete autopsy of everything with the alleged shooter. There are several companies that conduct acoustic analysis and should examine the audio that's available. And there is a lot of audio to be examined. In the last few days, we're seeing more and more people who've taken video footage who are just now getting that video footage uploaded. I watched probably two hours of just nothing but video footage last night. I was up like 3.30 in the morning looking at, uh, looking at video footage, but not so much to look at the video, but uh, more the audio, listening, listening to the sounds that people were capturing. We're beginning to get a much clearer picture of how this uh, shooting unfolded, unfolded and the time lapse that were being given was about 9 to 11 minutes. And we're beginning to learn from a lot of this new video and listening to these shots that there's a lot of serious questions that need to be asked. And I'll get to this in a little more detail later. But there are companies that do con conduct this type of acoustic research. And um, you should bring in at least three different companies to have them uh, examine all of the audio that's available and there's a lot of audio of this shooting they need to examine all that audio and these acoustic uh, uh, analysis these firms that do this acoustic analysis they can give you a really good idea of where these shots may have come from they can give you a really good idea of where the shots came from and that's a question a lot of people are asking including me having looked at a lot of the new audio. We'll get more into that in a little, in a little while uh, as to why that's becoming more and more of an issue. We need a complete investigation of Mr. Paddock's past, and this should include a search for any aliases. Aliases. Financial records and credit card charges. Now, we know he liked to pay cash a lot, but there's a lot of things that you can't pay cash for. And they keep talking about the fact that he's uh, gone on two dozen cruises to various parts of Europe and the Middle East. Well, maybe, but maybe this is just something that's being made up. Maybe this is just deep state propaganda. Maybe this guy didn't travel hardly anywhere outside of Las Vegas and the two trips that we know were confirmed where he went with his girlfriend to uh, meet her family in the Philippines. But as far as a lot of these other travels and meeting with all these other people, this is all speculation. It's information we're being given. So we do need to have the facts and we need to have this stuff checked out and it needs to be available, released to the public so that we can verify anything regarding his financial records, his credit card charges and travel records. There are many, many interviews that need to be conducted with people who had contact with Mr. Paddock. At first, they're trying to give us the impression that this guy was just sort of a ghost. Nobody really knows much about him. Bullshit. There are many, many independent investigators, several independent investigators, who have spent the last week in Vegas going into all the casinos and talking to people. And it appears that lots of people were very, very familiar with Mr. Paddock. He practically lived in these casinos. He was there every day for hours and hours every day. He was a platinum, uh, had a platinum VIP membership with MGM. So all of those casinos and hotels, he was in these hotels and casinos constantly for years. Lots and lots of people know Stephen Paddock. Lots of people know him. A lot of these people need to be interviewed. And a lot of these people are saying things like, oh yeah, this guy was a hardcore algae, total alcoholic. You never saw him when he wasn't in the casino gambling and drinking. One drink after another, nonstop, hardcore, alcoholic. And we're learning now from people who are being interviewed, dealers, people who worked in the hotels and the casinos, that he was very active the very day of the shooting in both a lot of drinking and a lot of gambling. Is a guy who's going to pull off this stunt, is he going to be in the casino drinking heavily and gambling? This guy was a shit-faced drunk. Hardcore alcoholic and gambling addict as well. That's what these people who are very familiar with Mr. Paddock are telling 
independent investigators who've been beating the street out there in Vegas for the last week talking to them. He's very well known in Vegas, especially in these casinos and hotels that are owned by MGM Grand. You know, it's kind of funny because back uh, during the Kennedy assassination, the Lee Harvey Oswald had been set up as a patsy, as we know. And one thing that they did was they created several different Lee Harvey Oswalds to go out and do things. He, for, for instance, he supposedly went to a gun range and started firing at another guy's target. And then when the guy took issue with it, Oswald began to get in his face and say, Hey, remember me. I'm Lee Harvey Oswald. I'm Lee Harvey Oswald. Then apparently he shows up on a car lot. He's looking at a car, and then he gets into a confrontation with the car salesman. He says, hey, that's a piece of junk right there. You need a real car, like one they make in the Soviet Union. And then the car salesman begins, hey, who are you, some kind of commie? Get off my lot. At which point, uh, Oswald said, yeah, well, you remember me, Lee Harvey Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald. Then, of course, we know he's down in Louisiana and New Orleans passing out fair play for Cuba. Then he's on the radio making a pitch for Marxism. Then he's over here. Then he's over there. He's down in, he goes down to uh, Mexico, apparently on two occasions, to the embassy, trying to get into Cuba. We have Lee Harvey Oswalds popping up all over the place, doing all kinds of crazy things that, that, that people would not forget. This was all part of a process called sheep dipping. Sheep dipping. Lee Harvey Oswald was a sheep dipped patsy. It's starting to look like Mr. Paddock. Starting to look like there's some sheep dipping was going on here with Mr. Paddock. The ballistics report. We should learn what weapons were used to murder those 59 victims and wound 500 others, 500 plus. We need a complete estimate of the shots fired. Now, we have a number that we can confirm, which is the people who were hit by rounds, of which we know there's at least 59, and, they, and some of these people may have had multiple gunshot wounds. We have another 500 that were apparently wounded with uh, rounds. So there's one place you can start the count, but you also have objects on the ground where shots missed, uh, but the shots hit other objects in the area. There needs to be a complete canvassing of the entire area to take a total of estimated shots that missed targets but hit other objects, totaling that with the amount of actual hits on targets, which would be, of course, the victims, the 59 who were killed and the 500 plus who were wounded. We need to get a, 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 a pretty close estimate of exactly how many rounds were fired, regardless of where they were fired from and at what rate. The crime scene there needs to be a complete investigation. There are two crime scenes. One, of course, is the shooter's nest, and the other would be the area where the spectators to the concert were, who were the ones who were fired upon. We need a complete investigation of the uh, shooter's nest, including fingerprints, because it seems that there may have been another person with Mr. Paddock in that room. We need to have a complete look at the video or photographic evidence. Ask anyone who's been to Vegas, they'll tell you it's the most surveilled uh, uh, couple of blocks on the planet where all those casinos and hotels are. Surveillance everywhere, especially in the casinos, a lot of surveillance in hotels. There should be a lot of surveillance uh, video footage to look at for the FBI. We need to know if there's any video footage that shows, remember, Mr. Paddock is out in these casinos and hotels every single day for hours and hours a day. We need to know if there's any video footage that shows him with any other individuals. Is he walking with them, talking with them, sitting with them, uh, entering in and out of places, uh, hotels, casinos, restaurants, coffee shops, anything like that? You will probably find maybe something with his girlfriend, even though she was sent away a week prior, but there may be someone else. We need to know who else was uh, spending a little time with the alleged shooter, Mr. Paddock because it's appearing very, very clear at this point that he was not acting alone. Lots and lots of video footage that needs to be looked at. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time, but they need to take the time and do this right. There needs to be crime scene photos, of course, of everything in that shooter's nest, 
And if what they're telling us is true, that all the shots came from there, fired by Mr. Paddock, we should have well over a thousand, a thousand pieces of spent brass shell cartridges. Should be about a thousand rounds, somewhere in that range. I've seen a couple pictures and I see a couple rounds. I see handfuls, maybe 50 rounds or so. Uh, generally, these rounds are not going to be discharged all over the damn room. They're going to be discharged and, and uh, very close to the weapon or weapons he was firing. It should be a pile of them. There should be almost a thousand, if not more, a thousand pieces of spent brass. In a real investigation, every single piece of spent brass, every single cartridge should be counted. They should have an exact number of the total cartridges that were found in the shooter's nest. If he were leaning out the window and had the gun out the window, it's possible some, some of those cartridges could have been ejected out the window, but they would be laying on the ground below or on one of the two little roof awnings uh, below uh, the window, of which there are two roof awnings. They need to be looking at them roof awnings to see if there's some brass down there. We need a complete autopsy of every single victim, of course. We need to know exactly what, how many rounds they were hit with, what type of round it was, and what weapon fired that round. This is something that can be known. This is not, uh, you know, a big mystery. This is something that ballistics, this is something the investigation can reveal. We can find out what weapons fired these shots. This information can be known should be released to the public. We need to know what victims were killed by what type of round and what weapon fired that round. Motive. The correct motive can only be known if we have the answers to the questions I have asked previously. The questions we just went through, you're going to have to understand the shooter, his mental condition, his connections, uh, all these types of things, as well as all the other information that you would gain from the investigation, autopsy, ballistics report, uh, uh, the toxicology report, uh, the acoustic analysis, all these things, uh, reviewing videotapes, talking to witnesses, all these things need to be looked at, investigated thoroughly and honestly, and once doing that, you might be able to start coming up with some kind of a Motive, because the motive that we've been given up to this point, Trey Gowdy doesn't buy it. Other members of Congress don't buy it. Obviously, the sheriff there in Las Vegas doesn't buy it. I don't buy it. I bet most of you don't buy it. Lone gunman snapped bullshit. We need a motive. We need to answer a lot of the questions through this investigation before we can get there. We also need to take a look at the possible motive of some other individuals who were not named Stephen Paddock, who would have benefited from this event? Well, based on the last photo that I saw of Stephen Paddock, I'd say it's not him. Would you agree with that? Mr. Paddock didn't look like a man who benefited. The last time I saw him, he had a fucking hole in his head. So who else might have benefited from this tragic shooting. I've got a couple names for you. Their names you're very familiar with. They pop up a lot in these types of deep state operations. How about Sheldon Adelson and Michael Chertoff? Both of those guys would have had a strong motive. Sheldon Adelson, owner of OSI Systems, a company who develops and markets security and inspection systems such as x-rays, body scanners, metal detectors, and other high-tech expensive security and inspection systems. Mr. Adelson's company stands to make huge profits from the Vegas shooting. OSI stock is surging. You might want to buy some OSI stock right now. It's surging. Adelson is a neocon. He's the neocon's neocon. He's an eccentric, hardcore Zionist billionaire. He's connected to the deep state, to the globalist establishment. He is, should be a person of interest. We have Michael Chertoff, 
who's best known for uh, his role in the 9-11 cover-up. Chertoff, who is a hardcore Zionist neocon, uh, has dual citizenship, both American and Israeli citizenship, was a director of Homeland Security during 9-11. Chertoff is the one that skirted the dancing Israelis right out of jail and out of the country, despite the fact that there was over overwhelming evidence of their guilt and having foreknowledge of the attack. They had large amounts of cash on them, and they basically admitted to being there to photograph and catalog the event. They're the guys who were standing on the rooftop of a building, setting up their video equipment, and cheering and flick flicking their bics after the first plane hit the tower. A woman in the building adjacent to the parking lot saw that, thought it was suspicious. She called the police, and they pulled over their van at the New Jersey Turnpike. They tested positive for explosives. They had large amounts of cash. They acted very guilty. They had plans and blueprints and maps of the city, and they said they were there to catalog the event. And Mr. Chertoff let him skate right out of the damn country where they appeared on an Israeli TV program and, and essentially admitted that they were Mossad agents. Chertoff, now CEO of Chertoff Industries, a company that also makes security equipment, is rumored to be entering into a merger with Sheldon Adelson at OSI. Currently, the state of Nevada is considering a law that would force all casinos to have mandatory metal detectors and backscatter machines. This law would force casinos, universities, high schools, federal buildings, and hotels to implement the, these uh, security devices, specifically these metal detectors and backscatter machines. Looks like a very big payday for Mr. Chertoff and Mr. Adelson and their friends on Wall Street who stand to make a fortune. And now that we've had this horrible event happen in Las Vegas, it's a shoe in that this law is going to be passed. Mr. Chertoff, Mr. Adelson, and their friends are about to make a lot of money off of this event. I would say that these are individuals who have motive, certainly opportunity. We have the CEO of MGM, who we talked about uh, a few days ago, the CEO of MGM, Jim Murren. As we know, Mr. Murren uh, is the CEO of MGM uh, Hotels and stuff, which uh, includes the MGM Grand, the Bellagio, and the Mandalay Bay. We also know that Mr. Murren sent a letter out to all his employees of uh, the MGM properties offering to match donations to employees that donated to organizations, left-wing organizations, on his list, which would include the Hamas-linked CARE organization, Southern Poverty Law Center, and other organizations who openly support, and specifically Southern Poverty Law Center and CARE are both big supporters of Antifa, We should also note that Murren's wife worked for the Obama administration. Mrs. Murren, Heather Murren, was on Obama's commission for enhancing national cyber security. Mr. Murren is a person of interest. They need to be having a conversation with Mr. Murren. The FBI should seek out any connections, communications, and associations between Mr. Paddock and the known gun dealing industry that thrives in Nevada, specifically Las Vegas, including an investigation into the fast and furious type of operations that we know are being run by the FBI and the ATF or the CIA. These, there are dozens of these types of operations always running. We need to find out if there are any contacts with Mr. Paddock and any of these organizations, which means no shit Sherlock Ray, new FBI director, may have to get his hands a little dirty in the nefarious activities that go on in his organization, the FBI, and their friends at the CIA. They're always running these types of games, 
these types of gun running, these types of sting operations? Is it possible that Mr. Paddock got caught up as a low-level arms dealer, got caught up in some sort of a sting? And if you look at Mr. Paddock, Stephen Paddock, he's a alcoholic, a gambling addict, an eccentric millionaire with connections and a lot of flaws. He's the perfect profile for a patsy. Perfect. And they also need to look seriously, the FBI needs to look seriously and see if Mr. Paddock, as I said before, has any aliases. I talked in my previous video about the type of money he was making. And I hear people say, oh, well, he was a great gambler. He was doing uh, algorithms, blah, 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 blah. Dude was a VIP member of MGM. You don't get to be a VIP member of MGM with getting treated uh, uh, as, a, as a royalty because you're in there hitting the casinos and beating them. The house always wins, my friends. Every now and then you beat the house, but you keep playing, the house will get their money back. For us to believe that this guy was beating the house time after time after time, and if he was using these algorithms, those that's, that's the type of thing that will get you booted out of a casino. The casinos don't love VIP guys who come in and beat the shit out of them and take all their money. They like VIP guys who come in and lose a lot of money. I'm telling you, I think that uh, that uh, he was making his money, his mad money, that he was probably using this gambling addiction, and he was probably winning some and losing some, but he wasn't making the type of money to keep the cash flow going all the time the way he had it going on. This guy had regular large amounts of cash flowing into him, and I can only think of two activities uh, that you can experience that kind of benefit. One would be narcotics trafficking or gun or human trafficking and I don't see any evidence that he was into human trafficking I don't see any evidence that he was into narcotics or drugs or anything like that so the default option for me and the reason I come to my conclusion and the, and the fact that he had this fascination with weapons uh, is that he was in the business probably a low or mid-level gun runner supplying illegal weapons maybe he was caught up with some in the intelligence agency, maybe the ATF, FBI. The, remember these, in these types of sting operations that the, that the government does, they use people. They use regular people so that their fingerprints are not on it. They used, and a lot of these people who work for the organized crime also work for the FBI, also work for ATF, also work for CIA. The, these, these agencies do not care who they're working with. They do not care. They know these guys. Obviously, if you're an intelligence agency and you need to uh, to move some weapons, you you got to go down to to the uh, to the place where the people that do this kind of stuff are, and you know that they're involved in organized crime and everything else. But you need them. They provide a good cover for you so that you can carry out these operations. There's a lot of dirty, dirty dealings that go on behind the scenes with these law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies and the movement of guns and other types of weapons as well. I, have, I, I believe it's very likely, which is why I keep repeating this, they need to find out who Mr. Paddock was connected to, who is he associating with. Does he have an alias? Under that alias, will you find any warehousing or properties where you might find other types of weapons I'm not talking about his personal collection, which he, uh, which to some people apparently uh, seemed like he talked about, and some people he wouldn't. You know, apparently his brother and the people closest to him, his brother and his uh, girlfriend, were completely in the dark about this. But apparently he suggests to a perfect, almost not perfect stranger, but a boyfriend of his girlfriend's sister that he had a gun room and he was a hardcore Second Amendment constitutionalist, you know, kind of a right winger, you see. This sounds like pipeline propaganda straight from the uh, intel agencies right into CNN and MSNBC and ABC and CBS and all the rest. They're muddying the water, distorting the picture. I'm telling you, this guy probably had an alias. He was making lots of cash 
And there's only three ways I can think that you would make cash like that. Drugs, smuggling, weapons, or humans. Seems to me that the all the weapons he had, and keep in mind, we still haven't gotten a complete uh, uh, report on all these weapons. Yes, he probably had a lot of legally purchased weapons, but he might have had illegal modif modifications made to them. And if he was in the arms dealing business, these would not be the types of weapons he would be selling. The weapons he would be selling or moving would be in a warehouse somewhere, not his own personal collection. And he was also in involved in explosives, yet we have no evidence that this guy knew anything about explosives or even how to use them. But yet he had plastic explosive, 50 pounds worth, as well as the ingredients to make fertilizer bombs in both of his properties. None of this is adding up to a lone wolf gunman who snapped. No, 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 no. Much more to be learned. We need the investigation, and we need for the results of the investigation, a thorough and honest invest investigation, needs to become made public so that we can look at this and maybe figure out what happened. What happened? Thank you so much for tuning in. Towergate, day 215, October 8th, 2017, Sunday. I'll be back with more tomorrow evening. Thank you.